perspective, Cassie. He was. Now, they were swinging let, at me. Let me let me get to the points here. When you first encountered this white vehicle, did you see any blue lights on this vehicle? Not at all. Did no. you see any police markings on this vehicle? No, it was just a plain white Taurus. Did you see a badge on this man that first got out of the car? No. Did you see any police identification on this guy that first got out of the car? I saw plain clothes and a plain car. <laughs> did you see any anything? before you gave up that would have indicated that these were police officers. Just just what I told you. As soon as they said police officers, I looked at their face. They was genuine. I saw the badge underneath uh, Mr. Casey's flannel, and that's that's when I was skeptical, but I, I surrendered. You know, I, I, even though I was skeptical, I did. Uh, I behaved as if they were, they were police. Okay, now, when Officer Cassie comes back at you, you're backing up, right? Yeah. And you're engaged, right? Right. And then this other guy comes out, right? Right. Were you really focused what, with, with what was on his chest at that time? Not at all, no. There's, I, was, I saw two people. I was outnumbered, so I had to see, you know, I thought he was going to go behind me or something. I didn't. I so didn't. did you have any opportunities to, to see that badge on his chest? I feel like if I would have saw it, it would just been like a blur because he was coming towards me and I'm in the middle of this um, uh, scuffle. Okay. And I want to be clear so the jury understands your testimony because we went through it about uh, several different times just, just a little while ago. And when you went up, did you hear that guy getting out and say police? No. When you were being backed up, did you hear that guy at all say police? No. At what point in time did you hear him say police? I heard police after Aaron Browning had come over to me, and I believed it was Aaron Browning, but he had said in his testimony that he didn't say it, so I, you know. Okay. And is that, and you also has, have divided this into two separate parameters within, within this in, one incident, one where there were thugs and one where there were police. Right. Okay. At what time, in your mind, did they turn from thugs into people who were genuinely police officers? When they said there was police officers and when I believed the, the genuineness on their face and when I saw the badge. Okay. Now, Mr. Price also asked you about how you were feeling while this was going on. Yeah. Admittedly, we're pretty angry when they almost hit you, right? Action to lead in your honor. All right, what's the question again? I, I, I'll rephrase. All right. Yeah. On cross examination, and this is what I heard, so I'm just clarifying was it your testimony that um, you were angry when they almost hit you? I was going through a whole range of emotions. I was scared. Uh, I didn't know who they were. I was mad that somebody would be picking on me out of the blue for doing nothing to them. Um, I was a little disappointed, you know, once they said that they're police, that they had started the encounter. Well, I'm talking about before. Right, right. So, you said you were scared. You said you were angry. And it was a combination of emotions, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't have any further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Couple, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Price. Not until I believe the genuine is on their face. Yeah. Is what you just said. Right. So, the indication that they were police didn't matter at all to you. Is that correct? No, that's that's not correct. Okay, but. At some point, you needed to be convinced by the genuineness on their face that they were police. Is that correct? I just said that the combination between them being sincere when they had said what they had said and the badge. Is it your belief that police officers wear badges on their face, sir? No, they don't wear their badge on their face. Okay. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> you also, in reference to your attorney's questions, you said, Quote, and, I, and I quote you, sir, picked on me. Is it your belief that you were being picked on even though 
you approached this vehicle before Detective Cassie could exit fully the vehicle, sir? Yeah. Okay. I think that's all I have, Your Honor. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Masters. You can stand down. Thank you, sir. Mr. Stegmaier, anything further? No, Your Honor. We would like to uh, move defense one into evidence. All right. Uh, Mr. Price, do you have any comment about no that? No objection, Your Honor. All right. So defense one will be moved into evidence. Okay. Anything else for the defense? We'll rest at this time, Your Honor. All right. All right, Mr. Price. Uh, anything further for the Commonwealth? Can I have two minutes, Judge? Yes, you can. All right. Thank Everybody you. all right? You okay? All right. You all give me a uh, defense one. Yes, Your Honor. Thanks. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the Commonwealth has no rebuttal, Your Honor. All right. All right, so you prepare to move forward? Yes, sir. All right, uh, Mr. Weathers? Stegman and Mr. Price, come up here for a second. Yes, Your Honor. Thanks. Take that one. Carl, take that one. Okay. Carl, the instructions are all the same except for this one. This is where, and you missed this, instruction was spelled bad for all, everybody. And the other one is a threatening instead of threading. Right. All right, so that, attach that to your, take the top off. Okay. That's what we're, I did with the rest oh, of them. Hold on, so we're, we're going to use this and close. That's fine. Should we just put it back up? Uh -huh. Okay, great. Thank you. And, uh, and these all be here, too, just okay. in case. All right. Thanks, Judge. Thank you. I saw something else. Sure. You did, and I didn't like it. You, you mentioned it. No, it wasn't that, the threading. Well, you had the one where you thought the syntax was bad or something like that. No, 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 no. There was a... Uh... No, sir. There's an I missing, it looks like. There you go. We're letting it ride, though. All right. They're just going to have to deal with this. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are now uh, prepared to move forward. But we have uh, the instructions that... Uh, I'm going to read to you, and you all will be able to keep a copy of the, those there. Um, and I'll give you a, a little further instructions once we get past the uh, closing arguments. So, and I just, I've always found it's easier that we, you all can read while I'm reading them to you, whatever. So, this is in the Commonwealth of Kentucky versus Jonathan Masters. These are the jury instructions. Instruction number one resisting arrest. 
you will find the defendant, Jonathan Masters, guilty of resisting arrest under this instruction if and only if you believe from the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt all of the following. A, that in Jefferson County, Kentucky, on or about December 7, 2012, the defendant, Jonathan Masters, intentionally prevented or attempted to prevent Detective Joel Cassie and or Detective Aaron Browning recognizing, recognized to be acting under color of their official authority from an effectuating an arrest of the defendant by A, using or threatening to use physical force or violence against Detective Joel Cassie and or Detective Aaron Browning or using any other means creating a substantial risk of physical, of causing physical injury to Detective Joel Cassie and or Detective Aaron Browning and uh, that in doing so he was not privileged to act in self-protection. If you find the defendant guilty under this instruction, you shall fix his punishment at confinement at the county jail for a period not to exceed 12 months at a fine not to exceed $500 or both or at both confinement and fine in your uh, discretion. Instruction number two, menacing. You will find the defendant, Jonathan uh, Masters, guilty of menacing under this instruction if and only if you believe from the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt all of the following. A, that in Jefferson County, Kentucky, on or about December 7, 2012, the defendant intentionally placed Detective Joel Cassie and or Detective Aaron Browning in reasonable apprehension of imminent physical injury and B, that in doing so, he was not privileged to act in self-protection. If you find the defendant guilty under this instruction, you shall fix his punishment at confinement in the county jail for a period not to exceed 90 days or at a fine not to exceed $250 or at both confinement and fine in your discretion. Instruction under um, number three, disorderly conduct. You will find the defendant, Jonathan Masters, guilty of disorderly conduct in the second degree. Under this instruction, if and only if you believe from the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt all of the following. A, that in Jefferson County, Kentucky, on or about December 7, 2012, the defendant, Jonathan Masters, in a public place with the intent to cause public inconvenience, annoyance, or alarm, or wantonly creating a risk thereof, he, A, engaged in fighting or violent, tumultuous, or threatening behavior, or made unreasonable noise, or refused to obey an official order to dispense issued to maintain public safety in a dangerous, in dangerous proximity to a fire hazard or other emergency, or created a hazardous or physically, physically offensive condition by any act that serves no legitimate purpose and that in doing so he was not privileged to act in self-protection. If you find the defendant guilty under this instruction, you shall fix his punishment at confinement in the county jail for a period not to exceed 90 days, at a fine not to exceed $250, or at both confinement and a fine in your discretion. Instructions, number four, definitions. One, physical injury. As used in these instructions means substantial physical pain or any impairment of physical condition. Two, intentionally. A person acts intentionally with respect to a result or to conduct when his conscious objective is to cause that result or to engage in that conduct. Three, wantonly. A person acts, acts wantonly with respect to a result or to a circumstance when he is aware of and consequently, consequently disregards a substantial and unjustifiable risk that the result will occur or that the circumstances exist. The risk must be of such a nature and degree that disregard thereof constitutes a gross deviation from the standard of conduct that a reasonable, a reasonable person would observe in the situation. Four, public place means a place to which the public or a substantial group of persons has access and includes but is not limited to highways, transportation facilities, schools, places of amusements, parks, places of business, playgrounds and hallways, lobbies and other portions of apartment houses and hotels not constituting rooms or apartments designated for actual residents. An act is deemed to occur in a public place if it produces its offensive or prescribed consequences in a public place. Instruction number five, presumption of innocence. Uh, the law presumes a defendant to be innocent of any crime and the, defend, 
the criminal complaint shall not be considered as evidence or having any weight against him. You will find the defendant, Jonathan Masters, not guilty unless you are satisfied from the evidence alone and beyond a reasonable doubt that he is guilty. If upon the whole case you have a reasonable doubt that the defendant is guilty, you shall find him not guilty. Number six, 